Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern Ned Reynolds. It is Red Friday, and the Chiefs head west to Los Angeles to face off with the Chargers. Everyone's going, but not everyone's playing. <laughs> that is the case. Everyone will go. That's part of their contractual arrangement, unless they're ill or injured or something like that. But other than Patrick Mahomes not playing, there's really no definitive word on who will and who won't. It's probably going to be what Andy Reid said earlier this week. He's going to rotate the lineups. I'm sure the guys who have incentives in their contract to play a certain amount of time, like a Travis Kelsey and maybe a Chris Jones and people like that, although Jones is pretty iffy. He has a, a groin injury, which is nagging. It's it's kind of a, a chronic thing. He's had it for years. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems at one point, at every se- point of the season, we're saying, hey, he's kind of dealing with that he's, groin. He's a large human being, and, so and people who are active like that, uh, yeah, that, that can happen. But over and above that, he'll, he'll play next Sunday if he doesn't play a little bit against the Chargers. But I think we'll probably see a combination of rookies and – Guys who probably don't play a whole lot this year. Uh, maybe the Ross kid who's been had legal problems as well as physical. He might get in there. As far as Canarius Tony is concerned, I think. Now this is I don't know. I have no reason for saying this other than his actions this year. I think he's short term with the club. You think so? I think more than that. MBS is definitely short term with the club. That's for sure. But the game means nothing at all. None, it, I say means nothing. It is a game on their schedule. It's part of their contract. No, in terms of the standings and playoffs, it, it has no meaning whatsoever. The Chiefs will play again next weekend, Saturday or Sunday. It depends on the TV. But as of now, the game with the Chargers, nothing but pride. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it is our practice field out west, so we got to be good. <laughs> um we do actually have some pro football games tomorrow, which is nice. Do any of those mean anything? Well, the Pittsburgh-Baltimore game means nothing for Baltimore. It means everything for Pittsburgh. They have to win to maintain any hope, and not a guarantee, but if they lose, that is a guarantee that they're out. But in terms of winning it, yeah, the Steelers have to go in there, and Baltimore is very much like Kansas City. They more than likely won't play any of their regulars at all, and they do have a week off. That's the one team in the American Conference that has drawn the one by. That's all you get, one by in each league or each division, the American Conference, the National Conference. And Baltimore has that, so they will rest virtually everybody. Pittsburgh will may win the game. The other one is Houston and Indianapolis, the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts, and that is tomorrow night. And this is a winner-take-all as far as the playoffs are concerned. Loser, sayonara, for the winner, on to the next round. And that could be, Mike, it depends on the formulas and the way they work it, but it could be the Colts playing the Chiefs. That is a possibility. Man, if you remember, you probably don't want that, no, but I, uh, remember, yes. <laughs> not, I'm, I'm not, I know you remember. I'm <laughs> talking out to the kingdom. But a lot of people get down on Missouri State Bears football, and you know they don't have a lot of great winning seasons as of late, but they also have to consider the fact that the Missouri Valley is a very tough place to play. So much so, in fact, that one of those teams usually makes it to the national championship. How about for the last 12 straight years? That's what I'm saying, man. 12 straight. Now think about that, folks. The FCS, or 1AA, it's only a a half a step below the big time, or what is considered to be the big time in college football. 1AA is pretty damn good. I don't give a dog on what anybody says. It is really good football. From a depth standpoint, there's a difference. You don't have the bench strength that the big clubs do. But 12 straight years, the Missouri Valley Conference has been represented in the championships. Uh, This one coming up here is South Dakota State. They're the defending national champs. Nine of those conference titles, nine of those 12, have been won by North Dakota State. And they they were the contender last year, and South Dakota State beat them. Think about how that conference is, folks. That is a very good league, and any number of guys who you see on TV have played in the Mo Valley. It is a very good level of competition. The game coming up Sunday, South Dakota State, Montana, will match two of the Two of the premier teams in all of FCS or 1AA, South Dakota State, we know about. The Bears played them. Montana, the Bears play in the opener next year in Missoula, Montana. The Montana Grizz, get this, Mike. In the state of Montana, and that's big sky country out there, Montana and Montana State are the two major institutions. There are no pro teams in Montana. None. 
And the focal point for the citizenry out there are those two schools. They average 20,000 a game, 20,000 people going a game. If we saw 20,000 here, folks, we'd throw a grand parade and celebrate for a year. <laughs> this, this, is, this is amazing. It is, it's a big, big, big deal. Yeah. But I do think South Dakota State, they're only a 13-and-a-half-point favorite. Oh, wow. <laughs> Going into this game, Lady Bears had some action last night. They were at Great Southern Bank Arena. How many people showed up for that game? Less than 2,000. Golly, man. Go watch a game. Nothing um, else going on. It's Thursday night. This Thursday is night football's their, uh, over. fifth straight win for the Lady Bears. They beat Valparaiso. Valparaiso is not very good. They're one in ten now in the year, and the Lady Bears beat him sixty-seven forty-seven. But Mike, and I've said it all along, does anybody even know about it? That's just a, the, the marketing campaign. I, I'm down on the whole thing. Uh, the Lady Bears play well. They're a good team. That's their fifth straight victory. And they, that's their largest margin of victory this year. They have some big games coming up, and they're a good team. Beth Cunningham's done a very good job of coaching this ball club. Same with Dana Ford. But you've got to get some people out there to watch. That's the key right there. And it doesn't happen. Less than less than 2,000. Anyway, beside the point, Lady Bears did win 67-47, fifth straight victory, and on their way to... Maybe some pretty good things this year. They're a pretty good team. be nice to see the Lady Bears get back to where they need to be. What's the local college basketball picture this week? Well, they, are, they being the Lady Bears, are back on the court tomorrow afternoon at the Great Southern Bank Arena, and they're playing Illinois-Chicago. Illinois-Chicago's team is considerably better than Valparaiso. They're good. It'll be a good challenge for the Lady Bears, but the Lady Bears are a good challenge for anybody. They are a very good basketball team. That's at one. The Bears, who need to get well, Go on the road to Peoria to play the Bradley Braves tomorrow. That'll be a 3 o'clock game, and Bradley is pretty doggone good. The Bears are trying to shake off a 64-62 loss to Northern Iowa here in town, and that was two nights ago. That didn't, that didn't sit well. Bears are a good basketball team. They can shoot well. They're very aggressive, but, hey, you need all the breaks to go your way, and maybe that'll happen in Peoria tomorrow at 3. Missouri plays Georgia. That's the Missouri Tigers. Conference opener in the Southeastern Conference played Georgia at 12 noon up in Columbia, Missouri. And the Drury teams, who are both trying to shake off a doubleheader loss at Springfield, Illinois, two nights ago, they are home. They play in the O'Reilly Family Events Center against an old, longtime foe, Rockhurst, out of Kansas City. Should be some pretty good games. Lady Panthers first, Panthers second. Good luck to all of our local colleges playing this weekend. And definitely, as I mentioned earlier, it is Red Friday. Good luck to the Chiefs out west in L.A. Ned Talk starts at 1. It does. 1 o'clock is when our team will be here for the pre-pre-game show. And, uh, you know, we'll have something to talk about. No, the game doesn't mean a whole lot. But the whole structure of the NFL playoffs will be taking form about then. And, hey, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see just exactly how things are going to work out. Will the game be anything? Who knows? Who knows he's, who's even going to play? I will tell you, Blaine Gabbert will be the Chiefs quarterback. But over and above all that, how does it work out? We won't know until then. Does the game mean anything? No, not as far as the standings. But from a pride standpoint, it does. The Chiefs have won the AFC West for eight straight years now, and they want to continue that scheme they already have for this year. But uh, it'll be it'll be a nice little test to see how the regulars play. I, mean, I definitely can't wait to hear the conversation between you and the B team, and more specifically Josh on his thoughts on that college football game on Monday. It, they won't be very good. No, they won't. <laughs> but it's still insight either way, and I can't wait to hear it. Ned, you have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday.